Welcome to the Jimmy Curve. Let's try this again. This is our take two at this episode after the first recording just stopped working for no reason. I am your host, Jimmy Putnam. Uh, with me is Joshua Vossler. Hello, everybody. And Will Doherty. What's up? Uh, fresh off recording an episode of the Jimmy Curve Sans Jimmy. So let's recap and talk about how that went. <laughs> it feels uh, we're doing this again. <laughs> I, it, it, it's really weird because no one else knows that we just said these words like ten minutes ago. Yeah, I feel like a hack. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wanna, I, I but it, it, and it's not really rehearsed material. But there are things we do need to get to. For example, Will's introduction on that episode of "Oh shit." As opposed to the standard Jimmy Curve introduction of music and then welcome to the Jimmy Curve. Uh, and then I mentioned that... It, see, l the last time we talked about this, there was laughing and some back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> now there's just a lot of like, yeah, 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 get through uh, it. I, I'll say that this... it, it was a weird experience. Not so much because you weren't there, Jimmy. But just being in Will's environment in which he lives in. Yeah. Describe jo Will's environment. Josh isn't used to going to the poor side of town. <laughs> <laughs> Said that last time and it hit a lot harder. Describe <laughs> Will's environment. Um, it's like he has like a... I like, feel like that's a weird term for describing someone's apartment. Like Will, It's like, describe Will in his natural habitat. <laughs> yeah, it's just like the room which in like that we recorded in, like... Like I talked about, like there was a lot of Furbies, which is kind of strange <laughs> for an yeah. adult man, you know. Yeah. Um, and just like on t the top of the bookshelves, there were like these bottles of some sort of l elixir, liquids, mm. potions, maybe. It, it was. It's popularly known as monkey's blood. Okay. Uh, and it is a topical antiseptic, no longer cleared for use in the United States. <laughs> You know, Good. stuff like that. Stuff like that. This the uh, Will's natural environment type of stuff. <laughs> All right. So uh, I believe I mentioned before that uh, I am looking for some kind of sign-on other than, well, this is awkward, which is <laughs> what I used this time. <laughs> so if anybody can think of something for me to sign on with, something like, Hey ya, hey ya, hey ya, hello, welcome to the Jimmy Curve. Email it to us at the Jimmy Curve at gmail.com or tweet it to us at the Jimmy Curve. Uh, do you guys have any upcoming shows you want to plug? Um, yeah, I'm at the Zoo Bar this Sunday. For Zoolarius. Zoolarius. Zoolarius is a good show every week. It's really yes. cool. I've done that Fun. before, so that'll be exciting. Zoo Bar, do you know what time? Uh, I believe 8.30. All right. Showtime. Showtime. 8.30. All right. If if your team's not playing on Sunday night, then, you know, go to the zoo bar. Will, do you have anything in there? Um, if you're listening to this uh uh at the time that we're recording it, uh <laughs> I'm going to be uh I'm going to be at Vega tonight, uh this Thursday uh to do Grant Parsons <laughs> Flick You. 1 hour from now you will be at a show <laughs> yes. that no one hearing this can make it to. Right. But I'm not ready to rule out that we're going to invent time travel in the future. All right, done and done. I'm I'm on board with time travel. Hilarious <laughs> uh, is at eight, by the way. I was wrong. Eight o'clock, not but, eight three. <laughs> eight o'clock Sunday night. All right, I will be watching football. Uh, <laughs> anyways, uh, I have been sick for the last two weeks. Uh, will has been making fun of me for the last two weeks for being sick. I don't know why, but uh, I've been running through all of the symptoms of sickness, beginning with a sore throat. Uh, then I had chest congestion, and then I was nauseated, uh, and then I, uh, had a fever, and now I have a sore throat again. So, uh, it's been an endless cycle. Like, I don't recall ever being sick for two weeks before, but I'm feeling better. Welcome back, me! Yay! <laughs> but I'm still kind of sick. Oh. No, yeah, no. Here's the thing. You do know why I'm making fun of you, don't you? I don't. It's because I gave it to you. It was mine. I had the same thing. You didn't have the exact same thing I had. You had a lesser version of what I had. Look, just because I have a better immune system than you, don't blame me for that. See, actually, that's the thing, though, <laughs> is that I'm normally really good at being sick. Like, normally sick doesn't slow me down. Uh, I've traditionally, like, 
I, I, I don't call in sick to work when I've had jobs. Or, like, <coughs> even now when I've been sick and I sort of don't have any specific obligations, I've still been able to, like, go around and do the normal things that I normally do. But for the last two weeks, I couldn't. I could not do it. I, I, I couldn't leave the house. I was too sick. That does happen sometimes to people. It does happen. And, uh, you know, I suspect that, you know... It happens maybe... more often to people who are 36 than people who are 27. That's part of it. First of all, I'm 29, you son of a bitch. Well, Secondly, you, look, you look young. <laughs> yeah. You're still going to die before Jimmy. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for backing up my argument, <laughs> Josh. <laughs> I, you know, I no. can see the point. <laughs> <laughs> number number two, though, I think what's happening here is that old uh, old Jimmy mm -hmm. gone soft and is not <laughs> having to work state. Grandpa Putnam done been taking it easy for too long. That's what happens. Like, that's what happens when people get old, they retire, and that's when they start declining. Well, yeah, it's just like uh, Emilio Estevez, as Billy the Kid said in Young Guns, <laughs> you gotta test yourself every day. You stop testing yourself, you get slow, and that's when they kill you. Can I say you did a lot better? Like that was really good acting <laughs> compared to Emilio Estevez. So, I lo Young Guns was a dope movie, dude. That was a fucking <laughs> badass movie. Uh, but the one thing I didn't do when I was sick is go see a doctor, um, which is uh, something that I've. Uh, and I thought about it because I was sick for a long time and I really kind of wanted antibiotics. But I've had bad experiences with doctors. Like, I just don't ever want to go anymore. I feel like I get charged a lot of money for almost nothing. But I wanted to hear your opinions on that. I don't, I th yeah, I, th I just have a feeling sometimes if I go to the doctor, like, I could do that. Because it doesn't matter what you go to the doctor for. It doesn't matter what your ailment is. They always say the same thing. Get plenty of rest and drink lots of fluids. Like, that's their go-to. Right. Or, like, take ibuprofen and rest. Right. Like, my thing is, like, if if laziness and drugs could cure what I have, I wouldn't be sick. And it's not why I came here. You know? Right. Well, uh, let me just say, from oh. my perspective... It must be nice to have health insurance. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the other thing is like, I have health insurance technically, but I have a five thousand dollar deductible, so I really ended up paying for almost everything. Right. You know, like, and a doctor will, you know, if some, if what, first of all, if what you have is bad enough, they send you to another doctor, which is always annoying to me, like a specialist, or they want to run tests. And every time I say, you know, is this necessary? Do we need to do this? Do we need to have an MRI? Do, we, do I fucking need an EKG? What are you even looking for? They'll be like, well, it couldn't hurt. It's like, but yeah, those things, then they charge you $2,000. So, like, even if you find something and cure it, it still kind of sucks, like, because I'm out $2,000. <laughs> right, and I just, like, yeah, you're a doctor, which means you went to med medical school. That's good for you. But if it's, like, any other school experience I have, you don't remember any of that stuff. No. <laughs> you know? <laughs> well, that's the other thing that I think is interesting. One of the shocks to me as, like, I've become an adult is learning that you know, as a, as a kid, it doesn't really ever occur to you that most adults suck at their jobs. Or if the thought does occur to you, you'd never imagine that that extends to, like, doctors and lawyers, too. But it's true. The same percentage of doctors suck at their job as teachers or garbage men or whatever. Like, most people suck at their jobs. And the fact that that includes doctors it's terrifying to me, but if you go see a bunch of doctors, half of them are going to be terrible. They're going to give you shitty advice and not help you at all. Like, I, 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 I had some real serious shit going on. I'm not going to get into it right now, but, like, I had, like, a, a, a real issue that I was, travel like, seeking out specialists, like, all over Nebraska for. And fucking most of them were just, like... Don't know what to, don't know what to tell you, you know. Get lots of rest and plenty of fluids. <laughs> or or they'd be like, you know, if I get a surgical order from your family doctor, like I can follow that. 
but I can't diagnose something, <laughs> you know, it, it, it's just, uh, I, it, it got me completely sick of like them. And the other thing is that doctors, like the medical system is going to get you killed because my wife has epilepsy. So here's, here's kind of one of the things that happened. The first time that my wife had a seizure was, I don't know, what was it? Two years ago? Mary, how long ago was it? Uh, she's listening to music. She's not paying attention. But like <laughs> <laughs> two or three years ago, she had her first seizure. It, for, first seizure. It was the most terrifying thing I've ever seen. I was sitting next to her in bed when it happened. Like, wait. So two years ago, she had her literally her first seizure. That was when you discovered, like, you both discovered she had epilepsy. Correct. Well, here, here's the thing. It happened in her sleep, so she could have had others that we just didn't know about. Right. But, like, I happened to be sitting in bed playing video games next to her at the time, and it was a full grand mal seizure. Like, it was frothing at the mouth, spasming. <coughs> Excuse me, a lot of coughing for me today. Eyes rolled the back of the head, the whole thing. And I lost my mind. I panicked. I flipped out. I called 911. Paramedics came. Took care of her. And, uh, and they were actually great. Got her in the ambulance, drove her to the hospital. Ran a bunch of tests on her. Everything was fine. Saw some neurologists. And then we got the bill. And, like, it, like they charge you $3,000 for riding in an ambulance. Like, that shit's not free. So I asked the neurologist, you know, what do I do if this happens again? And he was like, well, you're going to want to you're going to want to call an ambulance like you're going to want to make sure she's safe. Like, OK, all right. And, you know, <coughs> talk to another talk to a couple of other neurologists. And, you know, one of them was like, you know, if, if, if you if you can deal with it, just wait for it to, to stop. Well, the second time she had the seizure was probably six months later. I was just as panicked, but I just watched it happen. Because I was like, I'm not going to call an ambulance. They're going to charge me $4,000. <laughs> and if I just wait five minutes, she'll stop shaking. She'll probably be fine. But I didn't know. I wasn't <laughs> sure. I was just like, the last time there was an ambulance ride, an EKG, an MRI, like doctors, they charge you for the room they charge you for scrubs and it was like at a certain point i'm out ten thousand dollars and they didn't do anything they just waited for her to stop shaking and i mary, oh, hold on what mary oh those are the pants they gave her in the hospital <laughs> that she's wearing right now so, so, you, so, so don't you, act like you didn't get your ten thousand dollars <laughs> worth she still has those pants so so I, but uh, but see that whole medical profession thing is gonna get you killed because at a certain point there's gonna be something wrong with you and you're gonna go, ah, I'm gonna wait and see, cause like you don't know you don't know how serious it is. But if they if they charge you ten thousand dollars for nothing twice, the third time you're like, am I crying wolf? Like what am I supposed to do? I don't. Know, do you have experiences with hospitals at all? That I, I, one of my, one of my first jokes was like related to this about doctors like not really knowing what they're doing. Do you remember that joke? Mm. Where where I was like, you know, I, I'm I'm really have a mistrust for my doctor. I don't really think he knows what he's doing. So I decided to test him, and I made an appointment for just like a, a regular physical. And on my way, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna see if he really knows what he's doing. And so like on my way to the doctor's office I shit my pants on purpose to see <laughs> what he says he gives me a full entire physical mm -hmm. right leaves then comes back I expect him to say something about me shitting my pants and he goes Joshua I don't I don't know how to tell you this uh but you have an ear infection <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say it was a good joke <laughs> It was an early joke. Uh, wah, wah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I, I'd be curious to know what most people's experiences are with the medical profession. Because I have friends who are doctors, and they're good people. But, I, but my experience with the doctors that I've gone to has, for the most part, been bad. I, I don't feel like I've gotten help. 
I haven't been treated like respectfully. It, I don't feel like the doctors want to help me. I just I don't. Every time I go see a doctor, I feel like they're trying to get me out of there as quick as they can. The same as like the girl working at Subway making a sandwich. Like her goal is just for me to be out of there as fast as I, as possible. Like that's the best outcome for her is that I come in, look at the sandwich board and go, nah, not today, and turn around and leave. Like, that's the best thing that can happen. Right. Oh, yeah, no, it's even worse than the girl at Subway, because, like, the girl at Subway doesn't actually have a profit motive for you to, like... Right. Not, like, she isn't gaining the money. At the doctor, they have the actual, like, financial incentive to just churn through you as fast as they can, because they're directly gaining the profit from doing so. Right, right. I don't know. It, it, it's so. Anyways, I probably should have gone see, to see a doctor and gotten some antibiotics like ten days ago. But instead, I've just <laughs> dealt with it. You probably could have. You could have been the first confirmed Ebola case in the United <laughs> States. Yeah. Then we'd have a celebrity on this show, and it would be <laughs> successful. Uh, there you are. Send us an email at the Jimmy Curve at gmail.com. <laughs> Tell us about your doctor's experiences. What do you think? Like, like on a percentage scale, what do you think the odds are that you literally had Ebola? Zero. But I don't know what Ebola I don't know what the symptoms of Ebola are. <laughs> well, I think it's I think like it starts as just like severe flu like symptoms, doesn't it? Yeah, I didn't have flu like symptoms. Oh. <clears throat> okay. Flu would be like lots of vomiting. And feverishness. I had more like a, a variety of strep throat feel feeling mm. feeling. I would argue, but I don't know. I mean, I'm not a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> I think that the worst thing about going to the doctor's office, honestly, is the weigh in. Do I really have to weigh in <laughs> every time I come? <laughs> Like, could you, it's obvious, like, I'm a big guy, you know what I mean? And then, like, I humor myself by, like, taking off my shoes. <laughs> right. You know, right. like... <laughs> oh, this belt buckle's probably a pound and a half. Right, I, 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 like, I purposely fast for two days knowing <laughs> I have a doctor's appointment coming up just because it's embarrassing. I really don't think they use that for anything. I just think they take bets on everyone who walks in, like, oh, the over-under on this guy is, you know, 275. Yeah, like, hey, oh, I got the over, I got the under. Hey, everybody. He's still fat, you know, like still really fat. I don't know. <coughs> oh, I apologize for all my coughing. I can't explain it. Just a random thing. Anyways, uh, let's move on. I One of the things that's been bothering me lately and I wanted to talk about uh, is this. It, it came up with on the issue of confidence, uh, having confidence, being confident as a thing that people just tell you to have and how that's always confused me. And I wanted to get your thoughts on this idea of, because there are certain things in life that people will tell you, just do this, like, oh, just let it go. And you're like, but I'm angry about that thing. I can't just stop being angry, you know? But one of those things is confidence. Like, people who have confidence don't under don't seem to understand that the rest of us don't have it and can't just summon it at a moment's grasp. It really comes up in comedy a lot. Like when I first started doing comedy, especially improv, I was so nervous before shows I couldn't eat. Like I was freaking out. Like I just couldn't do it. And people would say, "Oh, just relax. Just be confident up there." Well, how how do you do that? Like you can't just be confident, can you? I ideas always confused me. You can't, and I don't know if this is, I don't know if this is actually what people mean, but I think, like, what the advice kind of is trying to get at is that it's something you have to, you have to pretend that it's true until it becomes real. You know, it's that old, the, the kind of fake it till you make it line. Like, you don't, you don't be confident, you act confident and it will read like real confidence which is close enough see i i yeah and that's i i have a hard time doing that for me because for me that's not that's not confidence right that's 
brazenness or something. Bravado? Yeah. Or like that's like courage. Like that's a different thing because confidence to me is knowing like knowing that you can do something and therefore you're not nervous about it. Like once you do your first great show or your first good show or the first time you get a huge laugh, at that point you know you can do it. So I understand how you could have confidence moving forward at that point. But until that happens, where does it come from? Some people are just born with it, but I I wasn't. I don't know. Um, <laughs> Jimmy, you were born with a very specific kind of confidence, <laughs> uh, which you I, I think you wanted to avoid talking about on the show, but it came up organically. What? Uh, the fact that you believe that, for example... You could uh, beat. Oh, oh. <laughs> let's just let's just pull a. Are we random, gonna do this? Are we gonna do this? Oh, we're gonna do this. Uh, for example, let's just pull a random uh, random example. Uh, Ronda Rousey in a fight. All right. Let, first, hold on, <laughs> hold on, hold on. Before I before I get in a, in a ton of trouble and everyone hates me, let me explain how this topic came up. <laughs> we were talking about. Uh, I believe Ray Rice or some sort of celebrity who had been caught with spousal abuse or something. And I said, I would never strike a female, <coughs> no matter how violent or aggressive she got, no matter how drunk, no matter how angry I was, I would never strike a female. And, and in fairness, you then followed that statement with a story about the time you almost beat up a woman <laughs> outside of her car. No, I didn't say I almost beat her up. I never would have hit her. I was just very, I was just, that was the most angry I've ever been. You Really? Because the way you told it to us was that your wife, as you stepped out of the car, your wife said to you, get her. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I'll tell that story. Well, I was, okay, it was like a snowy day, I was trying to pull out of a parking space, and there were two cars behind me refusing to move because they both wanted my parking space, but I couldn't back out because neither of them would yield, and I sat there for ten minutes screaming. So that was, I was very angry, but I never would have hit somebody. The, the way, where it came up is where one of you then said, well, what if it was a woman who could beat you up or what if it was a woman who was stronger than you and i was like what? no such person <laughs> exists <laughs> well, i was like i don't think there are any you're like well, what if you got in a fight with ronda rousey i was like i would never fight her that would you not... acted like we asked you were like uh well what if it's a unicorn you're like <laughs> no it doesn't exist well i don't think it does <laughs> Like, yeah, there's probably some Ukrainian chicks who have taken so much testosterone that they're just dudes now, but that's not really what we're talking about, right? I mean, yeah, there are three or four women on the planet who could probably beat me up, but, like, it, it, you know, if I get into a fight with Mother Russia, like, so be it. I'm not, like, I'll strike back at that point, but that's not what we're talking about. <laughs> Was Mother Russia like a Red Scare theme WWE character? It was a, it was a, it was a character in Kick Ass Two. Oh, okay. It was there was it was the it was the main villain's henchman in Kick-Ass You know, Kick -Ass you know 2. what was interesting? We talked about how you know Will and I are skeptical that you could beat up Ronda Rousey, <laughs> who is the the if you don't know who that is, like the the best. She's um, the UFC she was... women's hundred and thirty five pound champion. Yes. She what like... I, what what I said about that is that Ronda Rousey is obviously a better fighter than me. She's more skilled, and certainly there's every chance that if we got into some kind of fight, yeah, there's a good chance that she could move around, wear me down. Like, I have no cardio. Like, I couldn't fight her or whatever. But what I was implying is that no matter how skilled a 135-pound female is, she probably can't hurt me with a punch. <laughs> I just don't think she can. Like, if I stand there and don't move and put my hands behind my back and stick out my chin, yeah, like, she'll, she'll be able to hurt me. Like, and, and if she punches me a bunch of times, it'll cause pain. Or they, you know, they do the Muay Thai kicks in the legs. Like, that'll hurt. Like, it'll leave a welt. But, like... 
it wouldn't stop me from smashing a bottle over someone's head in a bar. Like, it doesn't put you out of a fight. Like, that... <laughs> If she gets a fully extended arm bar on, yeah, like it would probably hurt. She could probably prop my shoulder out of socket, but that but like the the lesson here is women don't fight men. <laughs> it's not in your best interest. And those of you who think this is in in the least sexist, I will say that we moved on to the conversation of what animals you would be, win in a fight, and you said you would lose against a badger. I, I I said a badger scares badgers are mean, <laughs> and so are women. To be fair, but I I I I don't know. Like I a badger, like I I feel like I could kick a if I got a running start and kicked a badger. I feel like that hurt it pretty bad. That's the quote of the the episode. I think. <laughs> I, look, this all. St- I just want to make a point very very clear, which is that. I think it's wrong to hit women. That's where this all came from. <laughs> I think it's wrong to hit women, and you guys have been trying for weeks to convince me that it's sometimes it's okay. Well, we... I just I just want to make a point very clear. You who claim to have no confidence believe that you can beat a professional UFC fighter in a fight. <laughs> Is that not like? But I think it would be wrong to do so. <laughs> That's there's a difference between a conscience and a confidence. <laughs> like that's that's true. But like we you, then we went on to other sports. We're like, well, you know, g- what sport can women beat men in? And you were like, none. none. There are none. They're like unicorns. <laughs> well, no, no. There there are no sports where professional women can beat professional men. Mm. And there are lots of like I, I couldn't play in the WNBA I would not be good enough like obviously I, I any 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 collegiate female basketball player would kick my ass at basketball but like that's a different thing that's purely skill based I mean fighting is so viscerally physical you know and like I'm not saying that Ronda Rousey couldn't beat up most men but I'm a very unusually sized person I'm a big person. Like it would be very, very hard. It, it, this is this is what I'm saying. <laughs> There's every chance that Ronda Rousey. <laughs> this is such a weird conversation. <laughs> <laughs> it is so. Uh, I gotta say, it is so gratifying watching you backtrack <laughs> look, when you're look, on the look. mic. <laughs> All I would have. To, what I'm saying is that, as a 250 pound male, it would be. This is stupid. Let's fucking move on. This is stupid. I cannot believe this came up. Oh, I hate this. Send your hate mail to the Jimmy Curve. At the Jimmy Curve on Twitter. I know. I get it. I get it, Jimmy. I understand. Like, now you you don't feel as confident. Like, maybe Ronda Rousey could beat a, uh, you know, sick, two-week, beaten-down Jimmy. <laughs> Maybe that's what you're trying to say. And we really need, a, like, we want more listeners. So officially, Jimmy is calling out <laughs> Ronda Rousey. Or and, and Ronda, you know, when he's she off weighs the, 135 pounds. When he's off the mic, he's he's Hold he's on. dreaming about kicking your ass. He she does weigh 135 pounds. This is where it becomes like misogynistic, though. <laughs> you were just like. What like we were, we brought up when you brought up like that she weighs 135 pounds. What about Bruce Lee? He weighed 135 pounds. Like, oh yeah, Bruce Lee could kick my ass. Yeah, in a second. Absolutely, <laughs> Bruce Lee's a man. <laughs> but he's a 135 pound man. Yeah, but men are physically superior to women. <laughs> is that is that sexist to say? That's a fact. Men are <laughs> bi- men are stronger, faster. Men are better at every physical activity than women. Except, I don't know, yoga. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> is that, is that, un- is, wh- why is saying that so controversial? That's, a, that's true. It's absolutely true. That's why men and women don't compete against each other in sports. It's not fair. See, I, I don't, yeah, I mean, I, I, I th- even if it's, like, cer- certain things are true, but you just don't, like, I don't know, you, you just it, people don't like to hear it. You know what I mean? That's something. Sure. Like that. I, I don't. I don't think men are better than women. I certainly don't think men are smarter than women. I. I. I 
think that would be they would be on they would be equals in those realms. But like can in I, terms of punching things, men are better at punching things than women. Can I make an argument that I think sounds like something you would have said based on what you had said earlier? Don't put words in my mouth. <laughs> I'm already hold on, fucked hold here. On. Yeah, 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 yeah. Are right. hold on. Men are men smarter than women. Look, are men smarter than women? Like I didn't I didn't create the government, okay, but look at every position of power, all right? Every position of power in a government, CEOs, where is it? It's all men, okay? That's just the way it is. That's not <laughs> my point. Well, and it's not true. I, well, it's sort of true. I was going to say Oprah, but she is she is more, I don't, I'm not sure what sex she is sometimes. That, I, we, we, <laughs> I mean, we've, we've come from a, 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 a patriarchal society and societal shifts like that take thousands and thousands of years to undo themselves once they get started like those are those are trends that extend for a long time and like progress is being made but it's slow and things like that don't change overnight you know but we're moving here's, in the right direction there here's what i'm asking would you <laughs> vote for hillary in 2016 yeah. <laughs> i don't vote <laughs> But were I to vote, I would. I would. <laughs> there you go. See, one one sentence. If, well, hold on. If, hold on. All back. If I thought she was the better candidate, I don't know. I don't know who she's running against. Give me a Hillary or who? Uh, or who's a good? Who's a good GOP? Jesse Ventura. You got uh, uh that Cruz guy, Hillary. Yeah, Hillary or uh, Rand Paul. Hillary. Okay. Okay. Rand, Rand Paul's a big Ayn Rand fan, <laughs> <laughs> so Hillary in a fucking landslide. All right. Um, who else? Hillary or Rick Perry? Hillary. Hillary Clinton. <laughs> All right. Hillary Clinton. Anybody or dude, Rick Perry. Oh, fucking Rick Perry. Hillary or Jeb Bush? <laughs> <laughs> well, you got me, Will. Oh, uh, no, no, Hillary Clinton. These are. Oh, there would have to be a good Republican candidate. Mitt Romney. I didn't have a big problem with Mitt Romney. I mean, I'm anti-religion, so the whole Mormon thing bothers me a little bit. But uh, every political candidate pretends to be religious, so how much does that really matter? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I just don't care about politics at all. I don't really have opinions. Like, the, the question is, would I vote... The question is, do I hate women? And the answer is no. You guys have been, you guys have been trying to fucking convince me that I hate women, no, and that I'm some kind of misogynist or sexist, and I'm not. I'm not trying to convince you that you I hate women. I just think women. I can beat them up. That's what I'm... I'm tr but I think it's wrong to do so. What I'm trying I don't to do, want to beat them up. What I'm trying to do is convince you that we need to reach out to the MMA community in Lincoln and set up a fight. Yes. We need yeah. to, we need no. To, to build our listenership. But I would never little, do that. We need to reach out. I would out never fight a woman. It's the for the show. I would never, See, that, I would never do that. That is misogynist. You would never fight a woman. Ever. Why? Because Women, a woman can make the decision to fight you if you want to be like, that's not. But because, because it's a no win scenario. If I lose, I got beat up by a woman. If I and what's the problem with that? If I win, I beat up a woman. I lose both ways. There's <laughs> you just digging yourself deep. Guys, I, I feel like I have a good point. <laughs> oh, I hate you guys. Lose. I hate you guys so much. Here's the thing. It just I, that's just. I'm not backing down off of this though. Because <laughs> you have confidence. I just think that's yeah. You do. That was the uh, that was the initial point of this, which is that you have insane confidence in very specific areas. You also think you could rob a bank. I anytime. totally could rob a bank. <laughs> <laughs> get away with it. I I do believe I could get away with robbing a bank. I I think it would take a long. I think it would take a a, a long time to plan. Uh, I'd have to be very careful about it, but I think I could do it. Well, like. People do. People get away with robbing banks. Like it happens. <laughs> It's not like it doesn't yeah, fucking happen. It, it happens. What? What? Why couldn't I? Like, why? Why is that so unusual? I think you're right. I think we associate with the level of risk. Somehow we associate that in our brain that it's hard to do or impossible. I don't think it. I. I think it's. I think. I think it's hard for stupid people to rob a bank. But I'm not dumb. I. Got, I feel. I feel like. I feel like most people. 
most people who rob banks do it uh, on impulse because they need money right away, and they don't take the time to plan. There are very few people who like that's their profession. <laughs> I, but I think if it were as like, if it were as easy as you say, there would be a lot more people for whom it was their profession. I don't think it's easy. I don't think it would be easy. I think it's I think it's very difficult, but it's doable. You just have to be smart about it and work really hard at. It. I mean, th- this is like saying. I think saying I could rob a bank is the same th- is the same as me saying I could get elected to the state senate. I could totally get elected to the state senate, but I would have to want to be a state senator and work at it for like years and years and build up a reputation and like get in shape and learn how to speak and dress a certain way. Like it's a fucking lot of work, but that doesn't mean it's not doable. Like I could do it. I have a good enough public speaking voice. I mean, I don't, there's nothing. I don't. I don't have any skeletons in my closet. Like I could. Well, comb there was my that one time shave. you put out a podcast where you're just talking about how you could beat up all the women. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that That's might haunt not you. Not what I said. <laughs> but uh, I. I. But like that. I think robbing a bank and getting elected to Congress or whatever is. Oh well, yeah, and I don't even think that you'd have to be smart to do that. Sarah Palin was a governor of an right. entire state. Right. Not, but it does bright. take, but it does take a lot of work, a lot of planning. You know, the, the the big difference between those two things is if you want to be elected to a government position, you can have a lot of people help you. Oh, yeah. If you were going to rob a bank, you'd basically have to do it yourself, and it would require the same amount of preparation and planning. Like, if I was going to rob a bank, I would wa- I would lose sixty pounds. Like, that's the kind of dedication I'm talking about it would take like i would need to be able to run 10 miles you know that might come up i don't know like there'd be a lot of shit that'd have to go into it i'm just saying i could do it <laughs> okay but let's so let's finish the thing that we were starting with here we've been which talking is, about this for fucking 35 minutes now oh my god have we um <sighs> do you not do you not acknowledge that you have an insane amount of confidence I feel like I have an appropriate amount of confidence <laughs> <laughs> in certain areas. Well, there, okay. there, there, like, like here's what here's what I'm saying. There are things that I just know that I can do, and it's because I've done them before. Like, I'm not a great guitar player, but I can play rhythm guitar. I would it, it, confidence doesn't really come into it if you were like, you got to go up there and play. Like, I can't sing, but I can play the entire Tom Petty catalog on rhythm guitar, if someone else was going to sing, you would be like, are you confident you're going to do a good show? I would say, well, it's not about confidence. I just, I, I know I can do it. Like, I'm just going to go do it, and I know I can do that. But see, what, what you're missing in that sentiment is that that is what confidence is. Even if you have, like, the example, even if you've done it before, even if you've done it a hundred times before, there's plenty of people who've done something a hundred times before and still don't have confidence. They still lack or have, like, a fear or a dread about that kind of thing. There's tons of, like, performers who never get over the stage fright, who you, every time they get on stage, there's, like, a fear, even though they've been doing it forever. Yeah, and plus, you know you can play the guitar, and you've played in a show before. Right. So the confidence, the definition of confidence is generally described as a state of being certain either that a hypothesis or prediction is correct or that a chosen course of action is the best or most effective. So then I guess my original premise, when people say, just be confident, they are misusing the word confidence. Yeah, I, I didn't know that was like the definition of it. I thought it was, it was more like just having... A belief in yourself. Yeah, a belief in yourself. Yeah. That would be self-confidence. That's a different... Right. Yeah. So, so what I'm getting at is you believe in yourself profoundly. <laughs> <laughs> I know no I just that's not necessarily a bad thing it's, it's not, not about belief it's I there are certain things I know I can do and certain things that I have well you're I guess I guess I I think I can rob a bank yeah <laughs> so yeah scientifically yeah. you don't know these things you believe them that's there true there's no test for you think you could rob a bank no that's true all right I would like to reiterate once again 
uh, for the benefit of any officers listening, <laughs> we have no test of he's robbed a bank. <laughs> <laughs> But I don't or think, I beat think, up a woman. I think generally, though, self-confidence isn't bad. A false sense of confidence is really bad. You understand you. that like most of the people who listen to this are not going to understand. They're going to think that I'm <laughs> trying to beat up women. <laughs> yeah, I do. That's why I'm enjoying it. God. <laughs> <don't>. <sighs> the Ray Rice of podcasting. <laughs> I would like to reiterate that I think it is wrong to hit. It's ra- vi- all, all, all violence is wrong. I'm anti. If this podcast got one percent of the listens that that Ray Rice video had views, oh, yeah. that would be amazing. <laughs> Jimmy, it's not that bad. People are going to think you're a violent person. It was just a, it was a total what if. And the the biological and physiological difference between men and women and what the difference was. End of segment. <laughs> <laughs> all that look, I know I know you're not happy about it, but all that happened is that like women who already had a natural reaction to like when they see somebody who looks like you on the street, they know they were right. That's all. <laughs> I do look like a guy who beats up women. (laughs) (laughs) But I'm not. Unless they wanted to be in an MMA fight. We set up the rules ahead of time. Contracts. You couldn't sanction that fight. Promotion. I don't. I I guess I don't know what the term "sanction" means, but we'll would have to be s- sanctioned by a, a a state gaming commission. Oh, they would never oh, allow this would a two hundred your... and fifty pound dude. This would be in your backyard. <laughs> <laughs> There's definitely been a Fox TV show with something similar to this premise at some point. There has really? been. <sighs> we do like a play by play commentary for the <laughs> podcast. No, I don't think they do that for MMA, but we could be the first. They do. Yeah. Oh, they do? Yeah, there's, there's play-by-play like on commentary. The ra- on the radio? Uh, I don't know if there's a radio broadcast. I mean, I know they do it on TV. Yeah. Maybe we could get Joe Rogan to uh, yeah. do a segment. <laughs> you know, do a little cross-podcast promotion. You know, I wonder what I wonder what he would think. Like, if he could be... If he Joe would... Rogan would beat the shit out of me. No, I mean, like, if you... <laughs> like, <laughs> like, if he just agrees with you, like, yeah, like, that's just the difference I, I, I want to know, yeah, because Joe Rogan is a bit of a fighter himself. I want to yeah. know if Joe Rogan thinks he can beat up Ronda Rousey or literally any woman on Earth. That's what I want to know. That's a good question. Uh, he... <sighs> it doesn't matter if he thinks that or not. He would never admit it. Because you don't think so? No, because because the organization that he's employed by oh. has a financial incentive yeah. in portraying these women as like these proper fighters. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Is Joe Rogan actually employed by like uh, Zufa UFC? Oh, Zufa. I don't even know what that is. They own. That's the company that owns the UFC. Oh. Okay. I'll, uh, this is my favorite episode, I think, so far. <laughs> I do. I think it's the most entertaining. I just think it's different. It's something fun. And I don't think, Jimmy, I don't think people are going to take it too serious. I'm, te- it I'm con- terrified about don't the reaction. <laughs> take it I'm out of fucking context. terrified how people are going to react to this. Jimmy, a little controversy is the best thing that could possibly I, happen. I'm, I'm, I already feel like I'm hateable, but now I'm... <laughs> See, there you go. And that's where you have a lack of self-confidence. Uh. <laughs> It's all a balance. Yeah. Do you feel like you need to donate to some charity now? Because <laughs> <laughs> there's at least one per person sitting at this table. That didn't come out well. <laughs> po person. Po <laughs> person. I don't know what you said. <sighs> I'm a, you guys are going to need to carry the rest of this show. I've been deflated. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> we shouldn't have done this when you were just, like, recovering from illness. You know what I mean? Uh, I, I I was not prepared to get into this. I, I this this, this kind of took it out of me. Let's you know what? Let's talk about a news topic and then get out of here. Let's do let's something in the news. Okay, so we got, you said you had, you want to talk about Tony Stewart. I do. I think that's 
worth talking about. I mean, it's going to be boring after the last conversation, but <laughs> <laughs> we need to bring it down. We like Tony Stewart just got acquitted yeah. of of murder. I think as he was being charged for. He was for people who don't know, he was uh, in a uh, a sprint car race, which is like these cars, small cars on a small dirt track, racing around this track. He ran a guy into the wall. The guy got out of his car, ran down onto the track, got run over and killed. And they were prosecuting Tony Stewart for murder. Uh, do you guys have any thoughts on this? Like, I've I've seen people posting on Facebook. It was a grand jury, right? I don't know. And they just decided not to prosecute that there wasn't right. any foul play. <laughs> um, Sounds right. I don't know. It. I saw the video of it, and it was something that wasn't televised, right? Right. Right. And yet it was the most exciting. I mean, it was horrifying, but it was the most exciting thing I've ever seen having anything to do with NASCAR. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, yeah, I would just like to say, you son of a bitch, I had no idea what the Tony Stewart story was <laughs> right. when you told me this was something you wanted to talk about during the podcast. So I'm just like, eh, okay, Tony Stewart. I like, I, In my head, it's like, I think maybe he is an old race car driver. And I Googled it, and like with no foreknowledge, I had to watch a video of a man dying. Yeah, like, you didn't warn me about the, that coming up. The video is visceral. It, 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 the video, people are having the same reaction to it that you had, and I think that's what's freaking people out because I'm seeing all these posts on like Facebook and Twitter and stuff of like, oh, they just let her murder or walk. Like they're they're treating Tony Stewart oh, like O.J. Simpson. I don't think that's true. No. I, I've seen people posting. I've seen people we know posting on Facebook about no, it and NASCAR saying that. fans, man. And the thing is, too, on the other side, like people that love Tony Stewart, it was out in the news that the guy that got ran over. They found marijuana in his system. That was supposed right. to be a big deal. Like what? Like he was high and he, you know, it was just ridiculous. Well, that, that well, was that, the whole thing with me is like if you run onto a racetrack and attack a car and die, <laughs> there's a not, man. It's your fault, right? There's like, a man who had like Jimmy Putnam levels of confidence <laughs> in his ability to win a fight. <laughs> Yeah, even I don't think I could kick a car's ass. Well, and that's the thing is those sprint cars, like, on those dirt tracks, they're they're drifting around corners. Those cars are going sideways at 50 miles an hour. Well, like, You I, can't steer. I do want to say, like, it does seem like from watching that video, I don't know anything about the context, about, like, the nature of the sport. But, like, he drove a guy into the wall. That's kind of fucked up. Like car accidents happen though in racing. Yeah, um, it's a it's a dick move, but it's part of the sport. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and I can accept that. The dude ran onto, as you said, ran onto the track. Like he functionally was committing suicide. Right. Um, That's what I thought. I can't ima I can't believe but, that they ever prosecuted him. But at the same time, like he, they could have not. Like, if they would have just stopped driving when they knew there was a guy on the track, he would also still be alive. Well, the, but but how were they supposed to do that? Well, like, There was I mean, only, like, several... 15 seconds or whatever, and, like, they didn't know. Yeah, I'm sure they weren't like, oh, look, there's that guy. Ah, fuck it. I'll keep going. You know? Yeah. Like, if they... Because the guy... I think they were coming around probably a... They don't, it's not a corner. A bend. Yeah, they, a turn. A turn, and, and, like, the guy ran out there. Like, they didn't know. I always, no, I just, how, I just, how would you know that somebody's going to run out there? I just feel like it's imp it's hard to blame anyone other than the guy himself for such a stupid act. Well, and I feel like in some weird way, because I've been... It's like blaming the parachute that doesn't open for killing a skydiver. Or even worse, like, turning it into, like, he was all hopped up on that Mary Jane. Right. Like, that's just ridiculous, <laughs> like... Well, you see these things all the time where people die, and then there's a big public outcry. But, like, the reason the person was doing that thing is because there was a chance of death. Like, whenever someone gets killed, like, skydiving or cliff diving or something, they're doing it because it's scary, and there's a chance you could die. Like, that's why, if there was no chance you could die, no one would do those things. It wouldn't be called thrill-seeking. Like, I always feel like it's like blaming the fish that killed Steve Irwin. Like, 
<laughs> you remember the, remember the crocodile hunter? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like he made a career out of finding the world's deadliest animals and lunging at them. You know, and then one of them right. got him, and it was like, who? There's no one to blame but himself. Like, the, like he, like he put himself in that position. He kind of got what he deserved. Well, from I mean that specific example, <laughs> like there were a number of safety protocols that failed that allowed him to die. Right? Like, didn't weren't they supposed to have like, you know, whatever safety measures to deal with if he actually antitoxins got and blah blah yeah. blah. Well, I'm sure, but like that doesn't change the fact that he would not have had a job if there was not a chance right. of death at, like, all of those things he did. There's like, only so much safety precautions, too, and it was a stingray, and it wasn't the venom that killed him or anything like that. It pierced his heart, pierced right. one of his aorta. Yeah. Right. Okay, so there's not probably a lot of chemicals that you can dump on a stabbed heart <laughs> <laughs> that can maybe, make it go. Maybe one of your elixirs that they... And there's, that yeah, and the, some, and, the, and the... Some par- monkey's blood. <laughs> Just like the, the paramedics at the side of the track, there's nothing you can do when a race car hits a guy at full speed. Because the guy ran out well, and jumped in front of it. Like, like is this a call weird? Me, call me crazy, but I feel like that was his intent. It had to be at that moment because, like, I feel like, like he got driven into the wall and he wrecked his car and he was out of a race. And then it felt like he was just like, "Oh yeah, well I'm gonna ruin your life." <laughs> and then she, like, I I expected there to be some more uh, coroner stuff. Like I expected there to be head trauma. Because, like, as an MMA fan, I've seen fighters fight two rounds and not remember it. Like, they got knocked down in the first, and they were they fought two rounds on autopilot. Like, they had no idea what they were doing. Like, that's happened. It, when you get concussed, weird shit happens in your brain. You don't know what you're doing. Like, when his car slammed into the wall, he could have had a concussion and not really understood what he was Like, it, it, it feels like you're in a dream at that point. And that might have been where his if you and if he was stoned anyway. So wait, so let me ask you this: in your mind, uh, if that was the case, like they're able to show, like during the initial accident, he took some kind of blow to the head that may have caused, and which I don't know how you would know that after, like I don't know how no, you just would a f- concussion. You can find you yeah. can find a concussion. Well, but how would you figure that out after he got pasted by a car well, the second yeah, time? That's true. But but just hypothetically, if you did find that. Then you were able to go back and say, well, Tony Stewart ran him into the wall, causing that accident. Then is he a murderer? No, because that's just, again, still part of the race. Like, running guys into the wall is a dick move, but it happens. Like, it's part of, like... if, if Right, and if it happens to some people a uh, statistically significant amount more often than it does other people to the point that it's one of the defining characteristics of their play style yeah. in this so, race. So you're saying, like, race cars don't kill people. People kill people. <laughs> they they prosecuted... Who was the hockey player who just whacked a dude in the head with a stick? Was it Todd Bertuzzi? Just, like, swung his stick like a baseball bat and hit a guy in the head. And, I mean, the guy went down... Like, was uh, severe head trauma in the hospital, and they wanted to prosecute him for attempted murder. You know, it was during an NHL game. You know, and his response was like, I just wanted to fight. Like, I was trying to pick a fight like like they do in hockey. But, <coughs> I mean, it was a, it was, it was crazy. It was hard to watch, you know, and they, they wanted to prosecute him for murder. So, I don't know. so was your attitude to that, picking a fight as part of the game? I don't know. That, that was his. That was his response. I don't. I'm not a hockey fan, and I'm not a NASCAR <laughs> fan. I, I don't know. I think if you run onto a track and get, this has been the Jimmy Curve. <laughs> <laughs> what are we even talking about now? Uh, this is such a weird episode. Uh, oh God! Uh, at the Jimmy Curve. Let's do a quick reenactment. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> uh, let's not. Let's let's wrap it up. Let's wrap it up, guys. You, you look exhausted. I this this took it out of me, man. I I've been coughing like I'm defending myself against nothing. <laughs> Just allegations of nothing. Uh, uh, the Vikings are playing the Packers right now, and I'm not watching it. Yeah, I have no idea what's going on. Not that I have money on the uh, game or anything. <laughs> <laughs> Allegedly. Oh, okay. Yeah. Let's all, let's all just breathe into the mic for for 4 seconds. <sighs> 
This has been another <laughs> episode of the Jimmy Curve. But seriously, if you do know any MMA fighters Don't. in or around Lincoln, we would like to hear from you. A lot of people we know do know MMA fighters. Also, f- fuck that. We're over that. We're done with that. <laughs> plug time before we end the show. Let's, let's plug some stuff. We have an email address. It's the Jimmy Curve at gmail.com. Yeah. We have Twitter. And we also have a special hashtag for Twitter, right? Plug me, Jimmy. Plug, Plug me, Jimmy. And so if you have any upcoming shows or anything like that you want to mention us mention on the show, all you have to do is hashtag Plug Me Jimmy with your show information. We'll plug it on the show for nothing. Mm-hmm. And Facebook. Yep. Uh, We're on that. Like us on Facebook, like the Jimmy Curve. Well, uh, thanks for listening. Uh, if you've made it to the 55-minute mark of this podcast, you have more endurance than I do. <laughs> uh, thanks for listening. I'm not a bad guy. Have a good day. <laughs> um.